This is traffic sign recognition from Lesson 5, Project 5, using deep neural networks, and I'm Mark Koss. In this presentation, I uh, explain uh, the various uh, methods and transitions and explorations I did with the deep neural network and the effects that it had on the learning and the accuracy of the uh, results. The, um, I started with a neural network that had two sets of convolutional filtering with max pooling and a second set of convolutional filters with max pooling, followed by a, a flattening uh, to a um, four-layer neural network, which is a pretty deep neural network. Um, so that, uh, that training um, was able to achieve an accuracy of 82%. And... Um, then when I reduced uh, from two to one hidden layers, uh, it greatly improved the accuracy to approximately 93% within 10 epochs. So this also reduced learning time and uh, from the reduction in training parameters. I also tried reducing the number of neurons per layer. Uh, going into the hidden layer, I reduced the number of neurons to a number which was below the number of classifications of 42 classifications or sign types, and uh, that reduced the accuracy. It wasn't able to train appropriately. It failed to fit, and uh, the accuracy was about 5%. So it uh, was very, uh, it, it's essentially a network that failed. Then I went and did the opposite and increased the number of neurons per layer Increase the first layer of the neural network to uh, 128 neurons um, of the backprop network, that is, and the hidden layer um, to 72. That had a significant increase in uh, accuracy. It went up to 97.5%, which is a really good. The training time also did increase. Um, then I increased the pooling size uh, with the first convolutional set of filters. And uh, increasing the pooling from a 2x2 two two matrix to a 3x3 three three matrix using the max algorithm. And uh, it reduced the accuracy, uh, probably diminished the feature resolution enough to lose relevant features. Um, I also did the same thing also with the uh, second uh, pooling after the second uh, convolutional filters and increased that from a 2x2 two two matrix to a 3x3 three three matrix. Um, had the, relatively the same effect. The accuracy also dropped to about 92%. Um, after that, I tried playing with the uh, convolutional and uh, uh, pool filter neurons. So increase the uh, the first set of filter neurons um, up to 64. That uh, reduced the accuracy. Um, it seems like it, it failed to generalize appropriately within 10 epochs. And it still looked like it was not a learning path at uh, the end of 10 um, epochs. Um, after that, I went to the second set of convolutional filters and increased that number to 64 and uh, bumped down the first one to 32, of course. And uh, that had a very good accuracy, 97 and third. So that... Uh, that had a, a good effect on the accuracy of the, the neural network overall. Um, after that, I scaled the inputs uh, from zero to one because it was pegged up and you know all the way up to 255. So basically, I scaled the inputs from zero to 255 on each of the three color channels down to uh, a range of zero to one, and that increased the accuracy very well. You know, we went from 70, um, 90. A, a 70 and a half to approximately uh, 98 and a quarter. So that had a really good impact on the accuracy of the model. Um, I uh, changed the input activation of the, the front end convolutional filter neurons to uh, sigmoid um, and changed them from RELU. Um, it slowed the learning process significantly. Uh, and at 10 epochs, it looked like it was still learning um, and uh, at an accuracy of 80% only. And so this is way less than a 98% achieved with the RELU, which is a much more efficient algorithm. So thank you for listening. Bye-bye.